Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godden and together we go through the data element config sheet which is how to create a CSV file with all of your data elements so you can do a mass upload into your DHIS2 instance. So we're back with Sarah. Hey Sarah. Hello Nicholas. And we're going to be looking at the config sheet for data elements this time. So uh, I have a siren going off in the background, but uh, that means we have to get going. So let's uh, scroll down here and look at what these instructions are. It's it's a bit simpler than uh, oh we skipped the instructions. They were they were so small. Uh, if you just scan up a little bit, there we go. Um, there's only two because we went over the config sheet for org units and it's very similar. So uh, if you want a little bit more detail, you can go back to assignment four or look at that video that we just. Uh, we cover a little bit more detail, but we're going to be focusing on this video on the specifics about the config sheet layout, the the different columns and and what uh, what they mean and, and what you put into them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So we've got a configuration sheet uh, finish that we wanted to look through. So similar to anything else you're doing in DHIS2, that's a metadata import. In your row one, you'll have your header, so that'll show you what you need. Um, in this case, name is more of an internal name. So while you're doing your planning um, and as a system administrator, this is the name that you will see. So what we like to do is group them in a, in a data set. So say we're going to have a monthly form. We put the word monthly. Now this helps us to group it a little bit later. No one's going to see this name. Again, it's only more of an internal name. Mm -hmm. what, what people will see on a report is the short name. So this is what's going to appear in your legends um, or your report labels. Mm -hmm. So that's something important to consider, keeping it as small as possible. Um, if you notice on the DHIS2 dashboards, the legends only give you maybe about 15 characters, 15 to 20 letters. So keep this as short as you can. Mm -hmm. Another place to consider name is a form name. So if you're going to be using uh, DHIS2 for data collection and you're going to have a form, this is the question or what the person is going to be responding to. So we've already gone through three different types of, of ways we're describing the name here. And they're all, uh, these two are optional, but they're important to include. Right. Um, the description is also important as well. Sometimes you like to s include a bit more about, you know, why you're collecting something or what the formula is for the collection. Now this can be, uh, this can appear on data entry screens for the person entering the information. In a later unit, when we show a little more, there's these little blue eye icons that if you hover over, the description's going to appear. Hmm. So this is something that can be shown to your staff if you choose. Okay. Yeah. So in the org unit video, as Nicholas mentioned, we covered a, a more on the UID and the codes. Mm -hmm. So uh, please check that video out if you need a refresher. What's new for the data element configuration sheet is our categories. So in a previous unit, you looked at categories and I'll just flip back to the assignment briefly mm -hmm. where we set up individual categories and then we had to group them into category combinations. Mm -hmm. Now those combinations each have their own UID generated. So what we've done is we'd, we've copied that category combination and we've pasted it in um, for the data element that requires that category. So that's a bit of work that you need to do ahead of time. Mm. You could also come in later and, and paste this in here, or you can manually do it. You can go into DHIS2 and for each data element where there's the category drop down, you can choose the combination as long as you've set it up in advance. But so the key is that it has things. to be created first. Absolutely, yeah, mm. it has to be created first. Um, so these other, if you reference the manual, you can understand a little more about the type of value this is going to be. Mm -hmm. And this is, uh, if you're using a tracker capture or event capture, your domain type here would be tracker. Okay. Um, great. So once we've got this set up, again, there's a few um, that can be left blank. And if you have an option rather than a category, in the same way, you'd grab the ID for the category and mm -hmm. paste it in here. So we'll save this as a CSV. Mm -hmm. and do the same import that we showed in the org units video. Great. And before we finish, I just wanted to ask about those UIDs for the data elements, because we had mentioned mm -hmm. that you needed to have them already assigned to some of the org units. Uh, do you have to assign them before you import them, or, um, or can you leave it blank and it'll automatically assign them? Or what would you suggest as a best practice? 
Yeah. So if your program, if you're going to be operating with another uh, system and you might need to link, you know, or map pieces of, of data to um, another program, it's good to assign them. So it's good to follow that link that we shared in the notebook where you mm -hmm. grab a UID, paste them in here in advance, because eventually you're going to need to know what the UID is for each of these elements. So it's better and it's easier just to do it up front. But if you don't need to do that, if what you're doing is just setting up a standard form um, and you're not going to be linking to any other outside system, you can leave this blank. And then okay. DHIS2 will just generate it for you, and you don't really need to pay too much more attention to it. Cool. So it's so it's more that that having it there and assigning it on the config sheet helps in the future for reference, but mm -hmm. but it's not mandatory. Absolutely. Yeah. Great. And the code again is optional, and you can change that in the future. In this case, it's been coded um, to suit the client's need based on their you know program. So this can be edited in the future as well. Great. Okay, I think that's probably uh, everything that that we need for the moment. Actually, um, that's that's a good ex um, explanation and description, and, and really it comes down to you know how you, the viewer, are going to be entering uh, your information into that config sheet, and then you save yourself a lot of time instead of having to go one by one manually uh, entering all of your hundreds of data elements. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And keeping uh, as noted in the org units video, keeping this uh, up to date can be quite helpful. Um, so having someone on your team kind of responsible for this. And then when you need to make changes, you can just come into the sheet, make your tweaks, and then import it again. That's a nice way to keep things organized. So if you need more information, um, take a look at the org unit import video. That'll give you a little more on saving it as CSV and the process we did for imports. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if you notice your import screen is kind of frozen on the spinning wheel, it means there's an error here. So you maybe you have a duplicate in this column, a duplicate in this column, or now that we have a new a new uh, category or option set, there may be an error here. So it's a good thing to double check that you've actually linked it to a category right. uh, that makes sense and that the ID is right. But you so, are allowed to have duplicates over there because you can have multiple data elements that have the absolutely. same category combination. Yeah, absolutely. Great. So uh, thanks for, for walking us through that, Sarah. And uh, I think uh, that's going to be it for, for now. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical Outcomes.